Professor Mark Billinghurst is a man on a mission. He wants new wearable smart glasses to become more mainstream. But that won't happen unless the glasses can start to complement our lives, instead of just being an unnecessary distraction. What we're hoping is that the theories we develop will be able to help inform the design of a wide range of wearable devices. The problem with the current batch of wearable glasses is that the person using the technology has to split their attention between the display and the real world. That's okay for tasks like reading a map, but the more physical the task, the harder it is to concentrate. Well, the challenge with current wearable systems is that the interfaces people are designing don't take into account how people uh, think and the, and the way their brains work. And so what we're trying to do is uh, address that problem and develop uh, models of how hu humans' brains will work with wearable computers. And so by combining them together, we'll have wearable systems that are much, much more usable. The project team at the HIT Lab have been working since the start of the year to learn how to make the technology less of a distraction and more of a help. 750000 dollars of Marsden funding over three years will help make their goal a reality. It will be able to triple the number of people we have researching uh, wearable computing and it also means that we'll be able to do a, a collaborative project between the Lab New Zealand, an engineering project with the um, Department of Psychology, so it's a great blend of engineering and cognitive science. A postgraduate student has been experimenting by using Google Glasses while rock climbing to discover how easy it is to perform a physical task while remembering information on the glass screen. The hope is that this knowledge will eventually help to save lives. Kind of applicability of this research is to search and rescue workers um, and whether they begin to use like these um, head mounted displays like Google Glass or something else within the context of search and rescue, how their performance will be affected um, doing their job. The eventual aim is to use cognitive psychology techniques to model the user and the wearable computer as a single system. In the past, most people have looked at the human and the computer as two distinct um, um, entities or objects and, and have considered them separately, but with this we can consider them together and by doing that we can build wearable interfaces that don't interrupt um, and that are much more useful, that become like a second brain to us really. This model can then be used to reduce the demand on the brain's working memory while the user performs activities such as walking while searching through icons on the display. But the computer will need to learn an appropriate time to start sending notifications to a person's glasses. If I'm skiing down a ski field, um, I don't want to see my email popping up on my face when I'm you know, going down the ski slopes. So the, the computer should know what tasks I'm doing and when it's appropriate to give me information. The Google Glasses are definitely the most inconspicuous of the Hit Lab's assortment of wearable tech. However, Professor Billinghurst is predicting a future when the glasses are even smaller. The wearable devices like Google Glass will become more and more unobtrusive. You know, in 25 years' time, we might have contact lenses, for example. The battery is pretty shocking at the moment. It doesn't last long. But future models could see users recording their day-to-day -day lives. That would help you find the keys you dropped. But it could well be a future where privacy no longer exists. Marcus Skibbs, CTV News.